disrupting the routines of life. We spent all morning watching some rodents that looked like fat squirrels. Don Juan called them water rats. He pointed out that they were very fast in getting out of danger. But after they had outrun any predator, they had the terrible habit of stopping or even climbing a rock to stand on their hind legs to look around and groom themselves. They have very good eyes, Don Juan said. You must move only when they are on the run. Therefore, you must learn to predict when and where they will stop, so you would also stop at the same time. Don Juan then showed me how to make traps to catch them. We gathered some sticks and proceeded to build the hunting contraptions, when suddenly Don Juan stopped and looked at his left wrist, as if he were checking a watch which he had never had, and said that according to his timepiece it was lunchtime. I was holding a long stick, I automatically put it down with the rest of my hunting paraphernalia. Don Juan looked at me with an expression of curiosity. Then he made the wailing sound of a factory siren at lunchtime. I'll be damned, he said. What's wrong? I asked. He again made the long wailing sound of a factory siren. Lunch is over, he said. Go back to work. I felt confused for an instant, but then I thought that he was joking, perhaps because we, we really had nothing to make lunch with. I picked up the stick again and tried to bend it. After a moment, Don Juan again blew his whistle. Time to go home, he said. He examined his imaginary watch and then looked at me and winked. It's five o'clock, he said, with an air of someone revealing a secret. I thought that he had suddenly become fed up with hunting and was calling the whole thing off. I simply put everything down and began to get ready to leave. When I was through, I looked up and saw him sitting cross-legged a few feet away. I'm through, I said. We can go any time. He got up and climbed the rock. He stood there, five or six feet above the ground, looking at me. He put his hands to either side of his mouth and made a very prolonged and piercing sound. It was like a magnified factory siren. He turned around in a complete circle, making the wailing sound. What are you doing, Don Juan? I asked. He said that he was giving the signal for the whole world to go home. I was completely baffled. I could not figure out whether he was joking or whether he had simply flipped his lid. Don Juan was still standing on top of the rock. He looked at me, smiled and winked again. I suddenly became alarmed. Don Juan put his hands to both sides of his mouth and let out another long whistle-like sound. He said that it was 8 o'clock in the morning and that I had to set up my gear again because we had a whole day ahead of us. I was completely confused by then. In a matter of minutes, my fee mounted to an irresistible desire to run away from the scene. I thought Don Juan was crazy. I was about to flee when he slid down from the rock and came to me smiling. You think I'm crazy, don't you? he asked. I told him that he was frightening me out of my wits with his unexpected behavior. He said that we were even. He explained that he had deliberately tried to scare me out of my wits with the heaviness of his unexpected behavior, because I myself was driving him up the walls with the heaviness of my expected behavior. He added that my routines were as insane as his blowing his whistle. Everything you do is a routine, he said. Aren't we all that way? Not all of us. I don't do things out of routine. What prompted all this, Don Juan? What did I do, or what did I say, that made you act the way you did? You were worrying about lunch, he said. 
You worry about eating every day around noontime and around 6 in the evening and around 8 in the morning. He said with a malicious grin. You worry about eating at those times even if you are not hungry. All I had to do to show you your routine spirit was to blow my whistle. Your spirit is trained to work with a signal. Now you are getting ready to make hunting into a routine, he went on. You have already set your pace in hunting, you talk at a certain time, eat at a certain time and fall asleep at a certain time. You know a great deal about hunting now, don't Juan continue. It'll be easy for you to realize that a good hunter knows one thing above all, he knows the routines of his prey. That's what makes him a good hunter. If you would remember the way I have proceeded in teaching you hunting, you would perhaps understand what I mean. First I taught you how to make and set up your traps, then I taught you the routines of the game you were after, and then we tested the traps against their routines. Those parts are the outside forms of hunting. Now I have to teach you the final, and by far the most difficult part. Perhaps years will pass before you can say that you understand it and that you are a hunter. To be a hunter is not just to trap game, he went on. A hunter that is worth his salt does not catch game because he sets his traps or because he knows the routines of his prey, but because he himself has no routines. This is his advantage. He is not at all like the animals he is after, fixed by heavy routines and predictable quirks. He is free, fluid, unpredictable. In order to be a hunter, you must disrupt the routines of your life. You have done well in hunting. You have learned quickly, and now you can see that you are like your prey. Easy to predict. I asked him to be specific and give me concrete examples. I'm talking about hunting, he said calmly. Therefore, I'm concerned with the things animals do, the places they eat, the place, the manner, the time they sleep, where they nest, how they walk. These are the routines I'm pointing out to you, so you can become aware of them in your own being. As I told you before, in my eyes, you behave like your prey. All of us behave like the prey we are after. That, of course, also makes us pray for something or someone else. Now, the concern of a hunter, who knows all this, is to stop being a prey himself. Do you see what I mean? It takes time, Don Juan said. You could begin by not eating your lunch every single day at 12 o'clock. 